back to simply learn. Did you know, before Docker and containers were introduced, companies had been deploying their software either on a bare metal or in a virtual machine. But they had been facing a lot of challenges in managing orchestration of services, instant deployment of services on different platforms, and maintaining multi-host applications. All these issues were solved with the help of Docker and its containers. In this Docker and container tutorial session, we will give you the conceptual exposure to Docker and its containers. We will focus on why is Docker container essential? What is Docker container? What exactly is virtualization? Then, few significant differences between VM and Docker container. Then, some of the benefits of using a Docker container. Architecture of Docker. Next, how Docker container works in the Docker ecosystem. And finally, a step-by-step -step process on how to create Docker containers. Let's begin with the first topic. Do you know why Docker containers are essential in an organization? Consider an example where a company develops a code on Oracle WebLogic software. In the company, a developer installs Oracle WebLogic software on his computer system. Once the application is developed, he shares it with the other team for testing the code. Now, the tester repeats the WebLogic installation process which was done by the developer earlier on his system. Later, the same application file is shared with the production team. To host the application, the system admin must install Oracle WebLogic on his system. Let me ask you an important question here. Have you noticed that the same WebLogic installation process was done thrice? But what could be the reason behind it? Due to the difference in computer environments, WebLogic doesn't work on the other systems, so installation is done separately on three different computers. But this process of installing the same software on different systems consume a lot of time and effort. In order to avoid these problems, Docker containers were introduced. Before we start with the concept of Docker containers, let me explain you what a Docker is. Docker is an open source platform that helps a user package an application and its dependencies into a Docker container to develop and deploy software. Docker provides suitable frameworks for different applications. Since every application has a framework with an appropriate version, this space also can be utilized for a new software application along with its required framework. As a result, Docker makes more efficient use of system resources. Containerization includes all dependencies, frameworks, libraries, etc. required to run an application in an efficient and bug-free manner. With Docker containers, applications can work efficiently in different computer environments. After this, let's talk about the benefits. The benefits of Docker containers show up in many places. Containers are widely used because of their services. Since it's lightweight, it can be easily deployed and executed on other computer environments regardless of their host operating system or configurations. Containers take up less disk space and relatively faster in executing applications. Containers run applications in isolation and also share the operating system kernel with other containers. By default, containers are entirely secure. Container policies ensure all applications are highly secure, including the Docker infrastructure. Containers are highly portable and can run anywhere across the Docker ecosystem. Multiple software can be encapsulated in a single container and can be easily deployed to different platforms. As soon as a container is created, it can be deployed into any other system where Docker is already installed. On that system, the application will perform exactly as it did in the previous environment. Containers take less boot up time. These containers save time in the deployment process of an application. Here comes the next important concept, virtualization. Virtualization is the technology of running a virtual instance of a computer system or running a virtual version of a computer resource like hardware, software, storage devices and computer network resources on the cloud. A virtual machine is an isolated computing environment that allows developers to use an operating system via a PC or computer system. Let's now talk about 
some of the significant benefits of using docker containers. The first benefit is the lack of external dependency. Containers have no external dependency for applications to run. Containers will just be used to host and run the applications. As containers are lightweight, they are quickly shipped to other computers and executed in different computer environments regardless of their host operating systems. Containers are lightweight. They share a kernel across containers and therefore use less memory space. The next benefit is the volume. Volumes are also a convenient way to share data within the Docker ecosystem. Volumes can be more safely shared among other containers. And the last one is isolation. Containers run application in isolation and share the operating system kernel with other containers. In containers, the host operating system provides isolation. Along with the applications, microservices can also be more easily isolated. Next comes the most important topic of the session, that is containerization versus virtualization. Containerization and virtualization are two different ways to deploy applications and microservices in a computer environment. In VMs, a hypervisor is a firmware layer that enables multiple operating systems to run side by side. A virtual machine has unstable performance as multiple running VMs run simultaneously on the same machine. Also, the efficiency of hypervisors is not as good as that of the host operating system. Due to the extra layer in VM, an application takes quite a long time to start. As you can see, there are two architectures on the screen. On the left hand side is VM and on the right hand side is the Docker. On the left hand side, as you see, there is one host operating system, a hypervisor, and guest operating system shared by all containers along with their dependencies. In VM, guest operating system occupies more space and leads to unstable performance. Guest operating system makes virtual machines less efficient than the physical machines. Guest operating system makes a VM slow because they access the hardware indirectly. On the other hand, Docker is efficient. Unlike VMs, Docker doesn't have a hypervisor or guest operating system. Docker consists of containers. These containers are efficient and are easily portable across different platforms. In VMs, the hypervisor has a scalability issue. The hypervisor creates a security risk as well. Well, did you know that according to Vitana, the chances of experiencing a data breach while using virtualization are high. Well, that could lead to a major problem for companies who are still using virtual machines. Next, let's have a closer look at the Docker containers. In case you are unsure what kind of applications can be added to a container, then look on the right hand side. A container can package Apache Tomcat and its dependency that is Java programming language in a single file. Later, a user can ship the container to another computer environment and run the code without any issue. It's usually challenging to understand the differences between container and VM. So, let me explain to you the differences in layman terms. As shown, the virtual machine is compared to a bungalow and the container is considered as an apartment. In a bungalow, Amenities like water, lift, roof, etc. cannot be shared with the neighbors. Likewise, VM is less efficient. It doesn't share its resources with other applications. On the other hand, containers share their amenities, binaries and libraries with the neighboring containers just like a person who resides in an apartment. The bungalow is owned by a single person. It cannot have tenants. Likewise, Virtual machines cannot run multiple applications. On the other side, Docker runs multiple containers just like numerous tenants reside in a single building. Next, let's look at the table in which we have made a direct comparison between virtual machines and containers. In Docker containers, data volumes can be shared and reused among multiple containers. Either Docker CLI 
or Docker API manages the volumes. Also, the volume drivers give the facility of storing volumes on remote hosts or cloud providers. VM is a container-based model. It utilizes user space along with the kernel space of an operating system. So, data volumes cannot be shared. Containers have a better performance as they are hosted in a single Docker engine. Docker provides the most substantial default isolation capabilities among the other configuration tools, making the performance better. Virtual machines run multiple VMs at a time, which leads to unstable performance. Docker is much more efficient than hypervisors. Docker enables developers to wrap, ship quickly and run applications as a lightweight and portable container. On the other hand, virtual machines are less efficient. Docker containers can run multiple containers on a system, but virtual machine can run only a limited number of VMs on a system. Multiple software can be encapsulated in a single container and can be easily deployed to different platforms. Containers are easily portable across other platforms, but virtual machines have compatibility issues while porting others across different platforms. Moving on to the next one. Let's have a look at the architecture of Docker. A Docker or Docker engine consists of two major components, Docker Client and Docker Daemon. These two components are connected to each other with the help of the REST API. Now, let's take a look at the architecture. A Docker client has no components, but a Docker daemon consists of a Docker host, Docker daemon, Docker registry, and Docker images. Docker client is a service that uses REST API to send commands to Docker daemon through CLI commands. REST API is a primary mode of communication between Docker Client and Docker Daemon. Docker Engine or Docker is a client-server application that builds and executes containers using Docker components. Docker Daemon checks the client's request and communicates with the Docker components to perform a service. Docker Engine or Docker is a client-server application that builds and executes containers using Docker components. Docker image is also one of the essential components of Docker. A Docker image is a file of instructions that are used to create containers. A Docker image is built using a file called Docker file. A Docker image is a template of instructions that is used to create containers. Coming to containers. A Docker container is a portable executable package that includes applications, and their dependencies. Docker containers are lightweight because they do not require an extra layer of a hypervisor and run directly on the host operating system. There is a service in Docker called Docker Compose. A Docker Compose is used for running multiple containers as a single service. In Compose service, each container runs in isolation but can interact with each other with no limitations. Talking about Docker Registry, it is a service used for hosting and distributing Docker images among users. Docker Registry is a service to host and distribute Docker images among users. Let's move on and understand how to create a Docker container. First, ensure to set up your development environment. Then, you can begin to develop containerized applications. For that, you need to create a Docker image. A Docker image can be created using a Docker file. A Docker image is created using a build command. You must build a Docker image that contains the code of what your application needs to run. In simple terms, a Docker image contains all the project's code. With Docker image, you can run the code to develop Docker containers. Once the Docker image is created, Ensure to store it in the Docker registry using the docker push command. Once a Docker image is created, you can either store it in a Docker hub or in a repository. Docker also has its default registry called Docker hub. There are multiple Docker images available in the registry and all can be retrieved through the docker pull command. As soon as a Docker image is retrieved from the Docker registry, you can build new containers. 
Moving on to the next one, let's understand how Docker containers work. In Docker, a Docker file is used to build the image using the build command and that image is stored in the registry using the push command. When you run the pull command, Docker image is retrieved from the registry. While a single container is built using Docker image through the run command. Did you know that a new layer is formed on top of the Docker image layers called the container layer when a container is created. This new layer consists of the application and its dependencies. In Docker, each container has a separate reader write container layer. Any modifications done in a Docker container are reflected upon the container layer. Suppose a container is deleted, the container layer also gets permanently deleted. This was the simple functionality of Docker and containers. With that, we've reached the end of the session. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated about more tutorials and live sessions. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.